we are on the Tema bound side of the motorway where traffic is building up gradually and the time take is uh, almost 5.40 going to 6 p.m. And as we speak, this traffic is one of the uh, ones that is being caused by the ongoing works on the uh, Tema motorway. But we understand that this work is going to take some time and the drivers here are feeling uncomfortable. Today even some are trying to tell us that it's uh, moving a bit faster. For how long have you been in this traffic? Oh, about one hour, 30 minutes. Are you aware of any ongoing works on the road? Oh, yeah, I got to know of that yesterday when I was going to work in the morning. How frequent do you use this road? Oh, every day, Monday to Friday, sometimes Saturdays and Sundays. Now, we understand this work is going to last uh, for quite some time. It's going to last for two, two weeks. Yes, please. Are you, are you going to cope with this or are you going to devise another strategy to uh, use another alternative route? Actually, we don't know of any other alternative route, so we have to endure this one just like that. Yeah, so we'll go through it. Good. All right, thank you. So that is a young man who is a passenger uh, in one of the cars over there. Now, I see a hawker here, a gentleman here who is hawking plantain chips. Hello. Hello. Yeah, uh, uh, chairman, how are you? Please, I'm fine. What's your full name? My name is Joe. We don't usually see hawkers. I mean, people selling on the, the motorway. How is that possible now? Why are you selling on the motorway? Because of traffic in India. Uh, internet, they are by a better one. Now, first, now, who are here for a side? They were TT Blanders. First one, they were Tobu to no Mutu or one of them called TT Blanders. And I said, I want to market in my internet. I'm going to traffic now. I'm going to be a bar. Now, time is now. Oh, and then I'm going to be a bar. One o'clock. Now, who to meet up with you? Now, if you look at this side and then uh, Titi Brothers and Ato Butino, near him, near him, I now we need the Nanka to boot in a Yamai no Muchemun. By a co Titi Brothers and a Honso boy. Nama and Hina would buy. Oh, maybe Nama bear eight point five. Eight hundred and fifty Ghana cities. And I would talk. 30 CD. 30 CDs. Yeah. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Uh, you are in a good business. You are taking advantage of this situation to sell. And now that the traffic is building up, uh, they will have to take advantage of it and then manage to uh, do some sort of sales. Then, some man who lives in Pram Pram, and almost every day he has to travel from Pram Pram to Accra just to work. He is a known friend of the media. Uh, I mean, he's a colleague. Uh, Mr. Osabute, yeah. you're close and you are going home? Yeah, I'm going home. Uh, and you can see with my colleague, uh, Sylvia, and another person is at the back. And uh, when we're coming, we're dreading the traffic situation. And lo and behold, is what we've seen. Yesterday, I had to spend like uh, five hours just to cross a small path. And it was, it was hell for me. It was not easy at all. And I think it's very bad that... The ministry has to construct a road like this. They don't sensitize the public. They don't create access route for us to divert to. Because they have access to motorcade, they just go through it. And it's very, very bad. Yeah. And we understand this is going to last for the next two weeks. How are you going to cope? Are you going to look for alternative routes or you do not have any at all? At the alternative route will further extend your journey. I'll give you an example. This morning I came. So I went through Tema all the way to the um, what do you call it um, Nungwa and I use the beach road to get to the office and normally if I use the motorway I get to the office by 8 20 but today I'm getting down to the office around 11 10 11 20. on Monday for example I got to the toll booth at 7 10. by the time I was able to sneak out of the traffic it was 11 30 and I got to work almost 12 midday I couldn't do anything because I was completely disturbed mentally. My whole body was aching and I could not even do anything necessarily in terms of work. So I was just sitting there. And that's how it happened till I came home. Even out of frustration, I even wrote an open letter to the minister and I asked that this is a major road. This is an important road for the economy. And you should have thought through how to create alternative routes for, for citizens. But if somebody comes and the person walks into it, what are we taking people for? He's on this stretch from Pram Pram 
all the way to Accra Central. I am seeing a senior citizen here. Uh, if you won't mind, I want to talk to you. My name is Fred from City TV, sir. Uh, please, what's your name? Ebenezer. Yeah, <laughs> Jay. Good. Now, um, how frequent do you use this particular street? Every day. Every day? Yeah. From where to where? From Tema to Accra. I work in Accra. Are you stressed? Mm, yeah, I am. From two days ago when they started to work on that bridge over there. From that direction. I think it's a bit better than here. When we are going to Tema, you see what is happening now. You spend a lot of time on the road. Mm. Now, uh, what in your opinion do you think should have been done differently before the start of work or even while the work is ongoing? That, not, that is not even my concern. What, concern. what they are doing now is lately they realize that there's a problem with the bridge. This should have been seen long time if they were doing regular maintenance. This would not have, would have happened. But what they are doing now is some sort of emergency uh, to, um, to do something about the situation. If they, ha if they are not doing this now, I think that there will be something very serious for the, for the road users. Mm. But, I mean, this road was constructed almost 50 something years ago and, and it is still in this state and even the other side is quite terrible with the portals and everything. Where are we getting it wrong as a country? Well, I think that there are people in certain situations who are not doing their work very well. We all knew this road was to last 50 years, I was told. That period has elapsed already and nothing has been done along the, along the way. My name is Fred from City TV. My name is Yasmin. How frequent do you use this road? Every day that I go to work. From where to where? From Tema to Accra. Didn't you find the kind of work you do in Accra in Tema? Um, there is, but I think that my services are better needed in Accra. And, so, and, uh, what do you make of the situation on the road? I think it's terrible. Our leaders have to devise uh, better strategies of fixing the motorway when there's a problem. Because I stay, in the morning I stayed in traffic for about three hours just to cross the bridge and then an hour more. So a journey that should take me one hour takes four hours now. So it could be over a weekend, on a holiday, they should explore other means of fixing other than putting us through all this. That is another lady who just closed from work and uh, another regular road user on the Temamoto way. And she's also been telling us about the fact that uh, the situation is taking a toll on her and how she goes to work and come back uh, is quite challenging of late. Spending hours, hours in traffic going to work and then when you are returning, uh, the situation seems to be the same. We've gotten to the construction site, the particular section of the road that is causing the traffic where the contractors are working uh, on a particular bridge over here. Now, in the evening, this is how it looks like where officers are on duty, they are at post with a reflector light trying to direct traffic uh, off the bridge. And I can see that there is some sort of diversion from the other side of the road uh, so that they can easily, those coming from uh, Tema going towards Accra would be able to divert and then join the road at this section. One very interesting thing is that the officers are about four they are here in their numbers, traffic is moving smoothly, and work is ongoing. I can see there is some sort of floodlight uh, being used by the contractors now, trying to work at night. I think this was not the case from the start. Uh, from the onset, when the work started, they were not working at night. But now I can see some floodlights there. Uh, the contractors are on site, probably trying to meet the two weeks deadline so that they can really open the road for motorists to use. This is the particular bridge under construction where we understand there is some defects for which uh, they have to fix it before it causes any uh, danger to motorists. Now as we speak, the time check is around 7 p.m. and the workers are here on site trying as much as possible to work day 
and night to ensure that they finish this work in due time to create that sort of convenience for motorists who use this particular road. We don't want to really get closer, but the uh, engineer is on site and we want to probably engage him uh, to see how far they are going with the progress of work. We have the engineer on site uh, trying as much as possible to ensure that work progresses. I'm believing that is the truth. Yeah. For how long are you going to work deep into the night? <laughs> Until the work is completed. We started yesterday around uh, 4.30 and uh, we, are, we have not stopped. So we are still working until you see that the final uh, concrete is cast. Earlier you gave information to the public that it's going to take about two weeks, yeah. if I'm right. Are we still working with the two weeks timeline? The two weeks include the down part which we have finished. So this is about 36 or 30, yeah, 36 hour work, you can see. So we are working according to time schedule, but we are hoping that we will work with uh, we, we work according to we work before uh, the time elapsed, the time given to the public elapsed. Now, a number of motorists that I engaged earlier when I was coming here expressed some sort of discomfort. What is your message to the public? Yeah, uh, I want to uh, thank them for the cooperation given to us ever since we started this work. Yes, I know there's going to be discomfort among the motorists, but when the bridge collapses, there's nothing one can do. So if we have seen the problem, we are abetting the problem. Uh, it is good that they are cooperating with us. They should have fitness that we will work very hard so that we will finish and uh, by Monday they will see the bridge open. Are, are you going to work on only this bridge or you have other works you have to do on the motorway? Uh, we are working on this bridge. This is where we have the problem. So this is where we are working. The other problem will be attended later because if you are to work currently, I don't think uh, the whole motor, uh, motor will be grounded. So it is important that uh, you do one thing at a time. This is the most important thing that we have to do now. So that's what we are doing. Mm. So we have been here, we have about 60 workers on site. We have been here throughout for the past 36 hours. I've just left for only four hours. So you can imagine, we are working around the clock make sure that we restore the traffic. But when the brain is exhausted, sometimes it cannot really focus in doing certain things right. How sure are we that we are going to get <laughs> some good work done on this motorway? Already, uh, the motorway is not that, uh, in good shape. Yeah, that's, it's my work. So, <laughs> this is the first time we are attending to such problems. So, we know how to manage ourselves when such situations arrive. We are, uh, uh, we are going to assure the public that we are going to do an excellent job, no matter the condition that we are in now. Again, in as much as you're working on only this session for now, the entire motorway has outlived its purpose. The, the lifespan of this motorway is something that one, uh, using it, is, one can describe it barely as, uh, I mean, a death trap. Motorway is not a, never a death trap, you see. As human being grows, it's like a human being who is in the old age. There will be a lot of maintenance, and maintenance is a, a progressive thing, a progressive thing. So, all that we are telling the motorway is that when they are driving on the motorway, they should be extra careful, because it's not the only way that we know. As time goes on, there will be some defects on the motorway, but that doesn't mean that it is a death trap. All that you have to do is that you have to be very careful those who are running on tall speed should limit because now the top, maximum speed that we have given is 100 km per hour. But sometimes you see a motor going as high as 160 km. When it has something happen like that, you cannot avert danger. So all my, all that I will tell the public is that motorway is still motorway. And uh, we are praying that uh, uh, we are going to start the new work as the minister promised. But the motorway is a motorway and they should be just careful when they are driving. Uh, we, uh, Ghana Highway Authority is still making sure that they maintain it. After this uh, bridge, I think they are going to do the portals, all the portals that are on this uh, stretch, they are going to pack it. We cannot do it at the same time. Even this one, look at the traffic. So they should all uh, 
bear in mind that uh, motorway, yes, you can go at the speed, but they should always go by what they have uh, as, uh, access to go at the 100 kilometers per hour or less. Mm. Talking about patching the motorway, that brings up an interesting conversation. The very last time this motorway was patched or the portals were patched, they used bitumen or quota on concrete as an engineer and, and an expert. Is that right? <laughs> uh, you see, when it's the you see, when you have to go by parking it with the concrete, it's like sometimes you have to close it for a while. Look at this uh, hardship that people are going through. Not that we don't know that you have to park it with concrete, but at the end of the day, when we are to go by this streetly, you have to close the motorway to park it. So I think uh, since it is have exhausted its lifespan, you have to be doing the assignment so at the end of the day we can still use it until we get the new one. Thank you very much. And we would only hope that the motorway is fixed uh, within the time frame given. I have seen for my eyes men are down there in the bridge trying their possible best to fix this particular bridge that had some form of defect and uh, they are trying as much as possible to f uh, finish within the two weeks uh, duration they've given to the public so that the inconvenience being created for the motoring public uh, you're going to finish this by monday so coming monday, monday you are finishing? You open it by monday you open for the traffic but that was not the so you started you started yesterday it's included when we started the under bridge, we did some work at the down, that's the problem. Okay. That is one week, and this one is also one week. So the two weeks includes when we started the whole thing. So when we started the whole thing, today will be the ninth day. Oh. The ninth day. Okay, so by Monday, this stretch will be open to public. That is some assurance we are getting from the engineer on site, telling us that by Monday, motorists and travelers who use Monday. this particular stretch, uh, they should uh, heap a sigh of relief roughly by tuesday morning when you are going to work you should be able to drive on this particular stretch without going through the hassle you endured for the past few days these are the professionals the welders you can see the light dropping particles of light dropping into the water and this is the under bridge they are here ensuring that they weld the metals to uh, the other ones down here and making sure that it gets stuck. We understand that roughly by tomorrow they are going to cast the top with concrete. So they are working day and night to ensure that they finish this work within the shortest possible time. The engineer actually gave us the assurance that hopefully by Tuesday motorists and travelers who use the Temamoto way uh, would have some sort of uh, relief from all this nauseating traffic they've endured for the past few days.